out it. So uh, I have another Cummins ECU here. Uh, this one was previously opened and looked at by my customer. Uh, they said they suspect the TVS diode is failing, but they didn't really know how to fix it or what to do after they opened it, so they put it back together and sent it to me. Um, now, I have checked the TVS diode, and I've removed it. We'll get to that in just a second, but also I visually inspected it, and they've done quite a bit of damage along the edge uh, from prying at it with the screwdriver, mostly on this side. Anyway, um, the TVS diode is good. Uh, if you check the meter there, you'll see uh, that way there's nothing. Right, and then if we flip them, we'll see exactly what we're supposed to see there. But when I first checked it, there was a dead short. And I suspected that it was the... Well, actually, I don't have a dead short no more. But this is still not right. Uh, earlier, it was a dead short. But now we have a little bit of resistance in there. So uh, I didn't really do much else last night. I just kind of uh, did that quick test because it was getting kind of late. But anyway, uh, so it was a dead short. I took the TVS diode off and I checked it and it was good. And I still had a dead short here. Um, and that's where I left it last night. But I figured I would take care of it today. And I have a new tool that I was sent uh, by Kai Wheats, uh actually an infrared camera, that I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to uh, test that infrared camera. So let me let me grab that real quick. All right, so here it is, and this is a very nice box that it comes in. Um, I have not opened it yet. Let me go ahead and pull it out here. So this is the Kai Wheats KTIW01. Uh, feels like there's some stuff in here. Probably the manual. Yep. Uh, I'm not much for manuals, but I'm sure it has uh, some good information. This is actually a really nice manual. Very big. It's actually got colored pictures. So that actually might be pretty useful. Okay. Then we have, uh, I guess, a device. And this actually, this is a nice hard case here. Let's see if there's anything else in here. We also have a plug and charger there. I guess that's a Type-C connector. Let me get that box out the way. Okay, so let's get this guy open here and take a look at this camera. There we go. We see it's a handheld version. A little bit bigger than I was expecting. Uh, it's a really nice case. I, want, I like that case. I'm going to hang on to that. So uh, it feels pretty good. It, it's not super heavy. I really like the cover it's got for the camera. That's perfect for me because then I can just, you know, set it around my bench and I don't have to worry so much about the, uh, you know, the camera part getting messed up. I see here is a USB connection. I believe that's mainly so you can connect it with your uh, PC. They do have some software for it. I don't think I'm going to be installing that. I'm, I'm going to use it mostly as a handheld device. Um, but it can take pictures and videos, and it can kind of overlay, you know, the uh, the infrared with like a, a picture. Um, but let's see it turn on. And while I turn it on, I want to compare it with the startup time of my little C2. Because my little C2 takes quite a while to start up, uh, which is kind of annoying when you're working and you want to test something. Uh, where it might have had a short, you don't want to, you know, take five minutes to start up. But let's let's go ahead and try here. OK, 
Okay, so the Kaiweed says it's at 100% now. This one's still, even after it boots up, uh, this one's already going. So yeah, that's that's really fast. See, now this one has to initialize. It's got to go this whole bar. Uh, let me open the cover on this. All right, so uh, got a pretty fast boot up time. That's that's nice. That one's still booting. Let me put that over there. Uh, so looking at the screen here, I see three different readings. It's kind of hard to see on the camera probably, but I have a red one, a green one, and a white one. And down here we have a max and min. And what it looks like is it looks like the red is the hot, you know, the max temp. The green is the low temperature. And this one in the center is, you know, where you're pointing. So that that's actually pretty handy. Uh, it's got a lot of different functions in there, a lot of different settings. I'm not going to get into that too much. I want to pretty much see how it does right out the box. Um, I think this little trigger here is for picture. So, uh, yeah, see, I hit it there, and it took a picture. I don't want to save. And I think I saw somewhere where if you hold it, it goes into video. Yeah, start recording. So if you hold it, it will go into video. All right, anyway, let's get to work. Let me uh, put this unit up here, and I'm gonna do a little bit of voltage injection with it. Uh, and I'm gonna set my secondary power supply to, just gonna do five volts, one amp, to see here what's going on, to see if anything gets warm. I don't want to do too much. It's, it's on the main rail, so it should be uh, pretty safe at 5 volts. So it's like it's, it's on the main fuse line coming in right here. Okay, so I got one amp set up there. Now I'm going to clip my ground to here. Okay, and for this... I'm just going to take some solder here and solder it to this right here. And I'm going to take my clamp and just clamp to that. So I'm just going to use the solder as like a little wire. All right, now let me make sure we can see this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and apply the power. Okay, and there we go. I am getting that. Let me open the cover. And already we can see something getting hot. And it's at 1.3 amps, actually, so... Yeah, this is definitely getting hot. Let's take a picture. So I would have thought that when I took the picture, it would have it would have took a picture of both the overlay and the actual just regular picture. I'm not sure how to. I'm sure it does. I just I'm not sure how to do it. So maybe we'll just save that for another day. But anyway, let's uh, let's see if we can't see what this is now. So we'll turn the power back on, and yeah, we instantly see it getting hot. It's getting I don't like how when you have your target on the max temp, it tell it just tells you over, and it's not telling me the temp. I want to know what the temp is. It just says over. And it don't tell me the max anymore. I guess it's, it means it's over temperature. That doesn't seem accurate. That doesn't seem right. Yeah, see, or now it's saying over. So it's saying it's hotter than what it's supposed to be. Okay. So the resolution, I think, is perfect because this is going straight to... This is going straight to this capacitor right here. And uh, full disclosure, this capacitor is actually damaged. 
and I noticed that on my uh, visual inspection that the little corner of it's missing so I'm not surprised that it's shorted I don't see anything else but let's remove this capacitor and see what happens yeah, I wonder what the temperature range is on this okay so it says resolution 256 by 192 temperature range 20 C to 550 C uh, oh, that's nice. It gives me the uh, Fahrenheit version too, in case you don't know how to convert to C if you you know American, since we use Fahrenheit. Uh, typically, I still use C for soldering just because it's easier and it's just what I remember being used to. Uh, but it says 1022 Fahrenheit. Now, I very much doubt that that is that hot. I would think it's probably um, much lower than that. But let's see if. Uh, if we can take 10 minutes to let this guy <laughs> boot up but so far this is this is it's really uh really accurate at finding the spot that's really nice and it probably will take a little while to get used to uh all the you know settings and whatnot but okay And I might not have the setting rights, you know, to show the temperature good. So, yeah, so this was saying, this was saying like 170C is what I got, or 180C. Ah, yeah, I think this one's going over too, man. That thing must be hot. I think this one maxed out at... which I've never seen before. I guess it maxed out at, what was it, 170 or 180? Because it gave me a funny little line. Yeah. Okay. So let's cut this power off. Man, that thing was so hot, hot it should have desoldered itself. Let's just get him off of there. I kind of had a feeling that that capacitor was going to be a problem. But I didn't know he would be creating a short like that. I guess that's why earlier I had saw a full short and then maybe I touched it or messed with it a little bit and it it kind of broke up that full short and turned it into that 120 ohms. All right, so I'm going to hook power back up. I know you guys can't see the power meter I'm using, but I'll tell you. Okay, so now we have nothing. There's no power or no current being consumed at all. Uh, which makes sense because I have it at 5 volts and, you know, that's a 12 volt uh, input there. So pretty much on automotive stuff, anything under like 9, nine volts, you're not going to get much from it. So that's good. Let's go ahead and get this piece of solder off of there. Let me cut this supply off. And... I'm not sure what the normal resistance reading between this circuit is. Because I've never really paid much attention. I usually just will find the shorts. Yeah, that, that looks about right. That's probably going through some kind of, you know, MOSFET there or something down here. Maybe this guy to get back to ground but uh yeah i think i think that was the problem that we were having for the short um now i still have to clean up the edges I, i'll probably do that later i still have to clean up the edges here where it got damaged i might replace this inductor here um and then i actually have to go through and try to find the customer's actual complaints 
because I don't think they knew they damaged it like that. I remember, remember earlier they thought that it was only the TVS diode because I think it was shutting down. Like I think it was running, the truck was running, but then after a while it would shut down. Which, you know, possibly could be the TVS diode. Um, you know, just hitting breakdown and uh, clamping a little bit too early. Which which does happen with these sometimes. Or, it, you know, it could be something completely external. And, you know, when they opened it, they just accidentally caused a little bit more damage. But uh, that that's going to take a long time to test. So, we're not going to get into that in this video. But, uh... I do like this. I, I will probably start using this over my C2. I'll probably give the C2 to my son. He, he'll probably enjoy it. Um, and then I'll probably start using this one. I, I do like the handheld design a lot better. This one kind of got annoying. And at first I thought I was going to like this better just because it was more used to like a phone or something. Uh, but actually, you know, I end up dropping it a lot because you're trying to work and I just, I don't know. It's just, it's hard to hang on to sometimes. I guess it would be better if I put a little loop there and looped it on my wrist. But yeah, that's probably going to go to my son. Uh, this one though, it's, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm, I'm kind of surprised at how nice it is. And you know, this isn't the only thing. I've gotten from Kai Weeds. I also got the uh, the Ketz O2. Let me grab that. Yeah, they also sent me this, which uh, I have to say I really like this soldering iron. As much as I like this IR camera, they're they're both really good, and I'm I'm kind of surprised at the quality uh, from uh, Kai Weeds. So um, I, I don't use it very often because you know, I mainly use my you know Medcal. But uh, I do use it, as you can see there. It gets used. Uh, a lot of times I'll take it, you know, to my van and stuff like that and use it for working outside. But uh, Kai Wheats definitely has good quality products at a pretty good price. Uh, I can't remember how much this runs, which, you know, this one I bought used, I think it was like 300 When this one was brand new, I think it was like 600 Flur Flur is pretty expensive. And the comparison's not too fair, though, because this one is much older, much older unit. But for the price that this one costs, I, I couldn't recommend anything like that over this. This, this is much better. Um, so you'll, you'll definitely be seeing me use this on the channel a lot more whenever I need a infrared camera, which most of my stuff, I, I don't do a lot with infrared <clears throat> just because most of my stuff I already know what's shorted or I'll just, you know, find it with my meter. I don't typically have to do a whole lot of, uh, voltage injection to find my problems, but it is a tool that we need in this industry and, you know, in this type of work. So I definitely appreciate Kai Wheat sending it to me. Um, I can actually honestly highly recommend it. It's very nice if you need an IR camera. Uh, it has a lot of functions that I haven't really gone over. So, I mean, just from our basic function, it was already enough. So everything past that's just, you know, bonus.